Välkomna! Det finns eh, spännande ämnen och så finns det viktiga ämnen. Eh, jag ska göra mitt bästa. Jag ska prata dokumentation. Det är viktigt. Kanske inte så spännande, men vi ska försöka hålla det spännande och enkelt. Och om eh, något är svårt så brukar jag göra att antingen får man göra det ofta som man tar bort friktionen man repeterar det tills man har sandat bort det där krångliga. Men jag är utvecklare så att jag tycker det är det här. Vi automatiserar istället. Så att det är det vi ska göra nu. Och vad är det för jök som står här fram då? Ja, Mattias Karlsson heter jag. Jag är partner och senior attack på ett konsultblogg i Göteborg. Oj, så är det en englisher. Then I will do in English. Yes. So, welcome again. So, I'm a partner in senior architect at a company called Vcom in Gothenburg in West Sweden. And I'm also Microsoft Azure MP, so my head is in the cloud, as I say. I say, yeah. Um, I'm also like to debug code. I'm a member of the OSCO Medician community. Uh, I'm an active open source contributor and maintainer, and mostly known for one of the guys behind the Cake build system. Uh, also, Patrick down there is here, and, few, uh, and also I do uh, JSON serializer and fun stuff like that. So a lot of backend stuff and build stuff. And from all, uh, of all, I'm a father and a husband. So we could talk a build pipeline. Usually, a normal build pipeline looks like it. You restore some bits, and then you build your code. After you build your code, hopefully you test it. Uh, you will package that up in some way, so you have an artifact, and publish it somewhere. Uh, There's one thing that people often forget, and that is, like, document, and that comes last. You enter the panic mode and you start to, like, we need that Word document that you're gonna add and attach later to the And I will show you there's a happy path where we can automate this. We can generate the documentation and we can package it and publish it along with our code pipeline. So there will be a, a couple of pieces of puzzle here. I will, this product will use Azure pipelines for automation. I will use art, Azure artifacts for the artifacts and build a part. And I will also use the Azure app service to host my documentation I will use an open source tool called YM to generate the documentation. So the end game is to, every time I publish a new release of my .NET assembly, we will have a nice sized with updated documentation with all, like all my types, all my properties will just end up published. So uh, like the normal, before we start the normal, pipeline is that we'll have something like we will just, this is the starting point, we have our .NET restore, our .NET build, uh, and it has a few, like, if you like the YAML, a few, oh, well, we'll have fetch the SDK, we will we'll build everything, we will <coughs> test it and publish it. So that's the normal pipeline. What we'll, we'll introduce, and we have some kind of release that does a task and takes that artifact and goes. There. So that's the starting point. So we want to bring on the docs. And here is the, where the tool called YM comes into the picture. And YM is an open source tool created by a guy called Dave Glick. And if you read on the site, it says it's easy, and that's what's relative, but the part is it's easy to get started. It has several recipes and themes and things that to get you going. And it's flexible, I mean, you can extend it yourself with your own custom code to do things if you want to style it in a certain way or want to document something that's not possible today. Uh, and this makes it very powerful because also can be, you can configure how it, how it works. So, installing YM. Um, it's a command line, so it's not very sexy, but it's available as a global tool. So you just do .NET tool install YM2. 
and let's go. So you just go to your favorite command line, you do a .NET tool, and you do install, and you do the dash g for global or a path if you want to install it in a certain path, and then you will have a ym command available globally, and you can type ym. So then you have the tool in your in a box. Once, like the good thing about ym is once you have it installed, like it can work both as a static site generator, so if you want to blog or something, so it can take things like Markdown, but it can also take things like Razor pages as input. So you can do CSHTML and do Razor pages and things like that. But well for us with documentation, the really cool part is that you can take .NET assemblies as one of the inputs that generates the site, and you can also take .NET source code, like C-sharp code, as the source. So you don't even need to build the code to document it. You can just take a source and do it. And it has configuration that you can, s how it will generate the documentation, you can, s I will come to that, you can configure that in a very flexible way. So, with the tool you get a couple commands. Um, one is new, very similar to the .NET new command. So I will generate a new site. And from that you can choose different recipes. Uh, one is the blog, so I want a new blog, you can add the blog. For our, we get docs, and with docs you get both a blog and documentation. So you can have like combined site. Basically a, re a recipe is like what module should it load, so you just define that. So that, that will, can you see? If you want, so that will just let that talk to, to YM and the whole thing and it will scaffold everything for you for a good starter project. So, and it has good ASCII art, that's important in the tool. So if you want to do naming and ASCII art, it's important in the tool. So once you get that, you will get a couple of files that's to get a good starting point. Uh, you will get a config YM, which is basically how it should, how should the engine behave. You can config that. You will get an input folder with a couple of sample documents that you can see how it's generated. You will get the sample blog post, some uh, editorial content for docs, and uh, in the hierarchy you can see that. Uh, the config is very sparse, and but you will get things like two RSS feeds, which host should I use. You will get like the title of the document and things like that. So you can highlight that, so you can steer it in. Uh, and once you have like your files in place, and you have your config in place, you can just do YM build, or you can do YM preview. Then it will start a local web service. You can locally test your documentation and view it. You can also add and watch command. So it will dynamically, if you change one of the markdown files, it will regenerate the site. And you can watch the changes live without having to, much like you do in uh, like Ember and NPM watch and things like that. So what we end up with these Markdown files is we will have the about of Markdown uh, with SP and Markdown page. Uh, you will have some sample documentation with the sample files and and the blog with categories and RSS feeds and everything like that. So that's what the, it gives you out of the box. So to make it easy, I prepared a sample product, just a simple sample code project where we have uh, a bank C assembly, and we have some unit tests. And to this, we will add a docs folder. So it's in a source where the source is, and a docs folder where we have our config and the input files for that. And here I added some stuff to documentation. I have my own domain, so I've added that now to, uh, to the host. I've added that like, my site is HTTP only, so it will generate for all, like if uh, for RSS feed we have like exact links, that will be HTTPS. I will configure that I want a logo up in the corner, uh, so that's part of the recipe. Uh, 
And the cool thing is that this document is actually a C sharp file, so it uses Rosling to compile it to the dictionary. And the title of the page, and this is really cool if you're open source. If you set this argument uh, on things like the markdown pages, you will get an edit button. It will take you straight to GitHub with the document in an edit window. So if someone, like you have an open source project, you can have things like, oh, is this typo? Well, they can fix it themselves. Hit the edit button, submit a pull request. And it will open up that markdown file directly. So it's really nice. And this is the cool part. This is what's called a glover. It's basically find all CS files that are not in a test project and not in bin or obj folder with all the code generated stuff. So this will take my bank assembly, but not the banks.tests. So in this case, we will have Glover and automatically. And you can also, I have not done this uh, example, we can also do the same Glover for assemblies. So if you ha your product has a third party assembly, you could document that too. So you will get the types and everything in your documentation for that. Uh, or it could be that you pull down an artifact for a previous build, you can document that assembly. If you want the full reach, then you can enable the XML docs so it's generated and we will pull uh, more meta metadata for that. So once we turn this on, we will have an API. So it will turn up a new new section that's called API. And here you will get uh, it will document all types, namespaces, interfaces. Uh, if you go into things uh, like class inheritance, everything will be documented and ready. It will if you go in in on methods, it will give, this will get by default. Uh, you can also add uh, sample code. Everything will be driven from the source. like 
If you have a property, it will be available. Uh, if you have a method, things like parameters, it's documented like this, so you can document them. It will automatically document the type for you, you don't have to add that, but if you want to add something like, if you have a timeout property, and for some reason it's an integer, it's good to document what's the default value. <laughs> it's it's so classic, like if you're troubleshooting in your documentation, and you're like, okay, it's an integer, is it milliseconds? Is it seconds? Is it, what is it? And a classic is like, like strange, of the 30 seconds my query has failed. Well, usually like, oh, if it's a 30 second default timeout, and you can see that in documentation, well, it's a good help. And you can also do the sample code, and basically just above your method, above a property, above your, like, this is old knowledge, but it's forgotten knowledge in a way by many. So if you just add it, and YM has supported it, so you just pick that sample, and I should so show you another, it will just uh, come up. So if we show some code, because uh, I had set the stage. going to do a sample project so we create the source for yeah we can do that a lot can everyone see so if we just um, create the source folder and create the docs folder I talked about So if you see here, we have just a sample project. Haven't even compiled it. Go into the docs, and so I have YM already installed, so it's available. So then we can do YM. Just did YM new to scaffold. Enter the recipe, which is docs. this structure I talked about before but we have the config and the sample documentation. I will steal the config from another project. preview flag and we'll probably That's all we had to do. 
have a documentation site. It will document a new Svetug assembly with the Epic class one. And that's what you'd like to get going. If we go back to my bank sample, I notice the type error. So if you go into things like the count class here, uh, there's a typo here. So like how fast can we get this into production now if we want to fix it? So trigger a new build in Azure Pipelines. And here we can see the two, we have the, our build project job and we added the generate docs. And the good part is that you can run the same code locally as you do on your pipelines. You can test everything, see how it turns out. It looks great, commit it and it will build. And if you're an open source project, a real good thing about Azure Pipelines, if you see here they're running both, is that you get 10 parallel agents, jobs. So you can run things 10, so if you do a commit, you can do things parallel. I don't, haven't added any time to my build process, because this runs in parallel with my regular build. And as we do using artifacts to publish it, it's only when the whole build completes. So if the test fails, it won't go through to the next release stage. So only if all tests succeed and our artifacts are generated, it's only then we will uh, have an update. Because we don't want to update documentation if it hasn't been successfully released. succeeded and the docs is probably soon done and so now our documentation is generated and we have an artifact and then <coughs> hopefully the release will trigger soon yep so here we have a release that is triggered by the continuous development. So we have a successful build that all tests passed and everything. Uh, and we have one artifact for a NuGet package that goes out that I had previously. And we have one artifact for uh, our. So now it will do. Unfortunately, the release pipeline isn't in parallel yet. But uh, in the future, we will get build and release will merge in Azure. So you can be able to use the same YAML files and then you will get the uh, parallel but so now it's running like the first job which was push the NuGet package so that's done and then it will push to the website so in just minutes along with a source code version with a source code our documentation will be up to date generated and Download the artifact.
back and we go and it's now successfully deployed to the website so that pesky typo is now fixed So this means you have a really smooth process. Documentation isn't hard anymore. You can add value by the XML documentation. So if you want to add more like in-depth, but it will document all your types, your type like your interface inheritance or base classes or anything like that. Um, and, but you can add things like when it makes sense, like default values or exceptions or things like that. Where you're from. So. Any questions? Yes. Um, is there support to document multiple versions? For example, I'm in this code library where I can import both the Plus on X and do the Plus on X release. What I've done there, you can set like a base path in YM. And what I've done there, if I need to support two branches, like two version branches, it's basically that I have a, a version prefix. So then I can generate both documentations from both libraries. And if you use something like um, Git version or Nervi version or something like that, you will know which version you're generating documentation for because of release tags or things like that. So I will basically do like a suffix. So if you do API like one O that or something like that, you can. It would be. I would do two YM sites then. Okay. So I would probably do like a current version site, mm -hmm. which has all the bells and whistles with documentation and blogs and things like that. And for API documentation, it isn't built in support, but basically you can just point it to a different folder. Or you can do it as different assemblies. You could essentially do, you could probably hack something together if you wanted to. But I would generate like a different side because then you get the whole dependency hierarchy and things like that if you, especially if you generate for dependencies, like if you also generate for .NET assembly documentation, there could be different versions for 1.0 and 2.0. So I will, it's like if you have your own, because then you can just zip that and have 1.0 is one zip, because if you're a commercial software, you may might not want to ship the site, then you can ship it like a zipped file to customer with, they can host internally, because it's just HTML. So they can browse the site on any, uh, okay. so I would do that. I will split into like, have one current site which has all bells, whistles with blogs and things like that, and have uh, sub-sites for other like 1.0 or 2.0 or uh, major releases. Yeah, and that's like with um, <coughs> if I like in the import folder, uh, like it's a static site generator. So you can just if you put markdown files or CSHTML files in a hierarchy, it will generate a site based on the names. So you can just do if you do folders like the docs folder I'd created there, it will create the docs uh, main menu and the markdown files under that will, in a hierarchy, will be automatically generated to HTML. So that's what you do for like editorial content. If I want something like a startup quick start guide or something like that, I just write markdown file. And that's fully featured um, GitHub flavored markdown. So you can do things like the triple back ticks for uh, C-sharp syntax highlighting or any highlighting almost. So you can, uh, it's very versatile that way. So if you have something that can't be auto-generated, and if you see some some popular open source sites like stuff like Cake.net, that was I'm one of my teams, is generated. This uses a just it's convention driven. So if there's no style CSS in the input folder, it will use the default. But if you place one, it will use that what you place. So you can override the default behavior just by uh, set that. And things like this documentation is just markdown files, and this has the edit button, which will take you straight to that document in edit mode in GitHub. But also things like we've done, because it's a build pipeline, and you can, in the CSH demo, is you can enter C sharp. Uh, things like our command line uh, documentation is actually the output from our command line tool. So while we're doing the build pipeline, we have a, because we there's no safety concerns because we, this is a static site, so we can run any code we want in that CSS 
this HTML is not consumed by users, we can actually run our command line to fetch its parameters and document it. Because it takes the output of that CS HTML will be the output on the site. So you can essentially, uh, and then it's like just string man manipulation, which means our command line tools are, and that's a classic, there's a new argument to a tool and it's not in documentation. It will be, if we publish a new version of our tool, it will be automatically documented with the next release. So you won't forget. What you might forget on a type is this part, like the nice text, but you will at least be documented. And then it's not just a matter of adding the summary and you type something meaningful, or you can add things like remarks for if something uh, something's like obsolete or something. And that's a really nice because Hawaiian will also But it will also document things like attributes. So if you have an, if we add an attribute to a class, it will be documented. Uh, I can do to a test. It will be quick because I have a preview on it. So, is here or the sample project? construct as the developer is already using. The things like types will be documented automatically. Uh, if you want the description, you just add a summary, summary tag to your type and it will be documented. Uh, but you get everything like class hierarchies, this is just from RGEP. But if you add something like the bank account where we have an interface will see that it's both from object and I account interface you get inheritance. So that's by doing nothing. Yep, question. Yeah. Yeah. So the question is namespace documentation, how you do that. And that's namespace documentation is done by you just add a special class. It's actually n not in the document XML doc specification, but YM supports something that several open source projects, including Cake, does. So if we go to Essentially, if you in your namespace add a class called namespace doc uh, and this 
attributes. You can add a summary, and we will document the namespace for you. So that's really uh, that's something standard in uh, C sharp. So it's basically that it's sh so just you don't get like things with uh, errors. Like this is something that doesn't follow standards because you have multiple classes here in one. So it's just it's it's pretty. Don't think so. We can, you can make it internal, <laughs> but my, because if it's a public class that someone can consume, you should document it. Uh, if it's not meant for public consumption, then you should internalize it. It's the idea, but I mean, probably could. Uh, it's open. YM is open source, and you have all. On, if you go to YMIO. get the site created with YM, so YM is created with YM. And the whole API documentation here is for the modules that YM uses. So things like the, the docs recipe, all the configuration keys that I used are, are documented here with what type there, and they are documented using YM. So things like for the, if you have you want to add them or RSS for the blog fields. Everything can be configured. But it, the idea is to have sensible defaults. You get quick up and running, and then you can tweak it to how much you want. So, are there more questions? I'm here two days. So just I can talk about this too long. So <laughs> because this is fun. Things are going. Yeah. Yeah, it, 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 I think it depends if you need to, because you can ex extend, like, there's so much power in the CSHTML uh, that you can like, do things like that, or you can do things by scripting it. Like, you, if you just want to, like, I want to document something uh, and you don't have a generator for it, if you can create a text file in the input folder, like a markdown file or something like that. So if you just can, then you can generate it. So if you do something like, I want to output this uh, XML file and input it or uh, like if you have sample code you can just push that from your project and paste that into triple t like generate that text file and then we read out about it so that's often an extension point as you but it's a little bit more work if you want to do then i will look at the source code for the others because it's an open source project and uh, so you can look at that the docs module but basically what the, like the modules do, does is that this sets which features should be enabled and all recipes are fetched from nuget so you can could essentially extend with something your own from NuGet. And there are a lot of extension points where you like, if you want custom CSS, there's a, if you just place a file with a header, you will be able to like do the menu or there's like the file names conventions. So just if I want a new menu, you can generate that and get a typed model, which you can do in your own racer page to generate the menu. Uh, if you want like on my own index page, you can do uh, like a CHTML file for that or a markdown file either, like if it's static. So in your, the good thing about the CSHTML file, you get access to all YM objects in those. You can data bind and iterate or uh, things like that. Well, my time's up. Thanks for coming. And <laughs> hope it was informative.